I'd like to uh, begin by saying I have a slight cold uh, on this afternoon, so please forgive me. Uh, it gives me a great deal of pleasure, though, to be the council member that has been honored and in making the initial presentation uh, to our forgotten warriors of freedom. Uh, this is a group of Filipino men who fought very valiantly for their homeland, the Philippines, but alongside of the thousands and thousands of American soldiers who uh, were there uh, in the Philippines um, fighting uh, during the course of World War II. It was during this period of time that the 260,000 Filipino uh, men who fought uh, were told that you will uh, be treated as uh, special uh, forces of the American Army. You will be uh, treated in an equitable uh, manner with the American soldiers. And uh, when the uh, war concludes, uh, we will make you citizens, and you'll be uh, recognized just like any of the other warriors who fought for the American cause. As we go this month to celebrate Filipino uh, American History Month, uh, which was originated, by the way, in the Filipino community here in uh, Seattle as part of Seattle's Filipino American National Historical Society, by a show of hands, is there anyone here uh, from the Historical Society? Okay. okay, great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, in about 2005, we encouraged uh, residents of King County uh, to join us in, in, in uh, recognizing the special honor, dignity, and history of these distinguished soldiers by joining us and putting pressure on the United States government as a whole uh, to provide the deserving uh, recognition to uh, these veterans, and a campaign uh, was launched uh, to do that. That campaign to give them full uh, recognition uh, will culminate uh, next week, I believe, on October uh, 25th, is that right, Cindy, with a special recognition in uh, Washington, uh, D.C., of these uh, veterans. Um, and many of them participated in uh, a really uh, tough battle, uh, tough march. Uh, please excuse my pronunciation. Uh, the Baton Death March. I don't know how close I came to. Pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm doing all right. Okay, thank you. Uh, where thousands and thousands of, of Filipino men who many of whom have been captured uh, by the Japanese, and hundreds died uh, on this uh, historic, inhumane, uncivil uh, march of, uh, of our freedom uh, warriors from the Philippines. And we want to especially bring out that battle and recognize the uh, men who, who fought in it. It wasn't only the Filipino men that were not adequately recognized during World War II. Uh, we had Native American uh, warriors that were part of something called the Navajo uh, Code uh, Talkers. And this was a profoundly important group during World War II because the Germans, the Japanese, actually nobody was able to break the codes, uh, council members of these uh, Native Americans who sent very important messages across the airways uh, that ended up being extremely supportive and helpful to the American soldiers who fought and won World War II, but they were never until recent years properly honored. Uh, Puerto Ricans and African Americans had to fight during World War II like the Filipinos in separate 
uh, units. It wasn't until 1949, actually, that the U.S. Armed Forces said, wait a minute, this is crazy, segregating our soldiers. And it was in 49, 1949, that we began to integrate uh, our troops uh, in this land. Um, now, I would like to uh, call upon General uh, excuse me, I'd like to call upon General Brigadier General Oscar Hillman to give us a little more background uh, on the struggle and the effort to secure a gold medal, which will be given out next week, as I mentioned earlier, um, by Filipinos and their supporters uh, throughout the country. Uh, Brigadier Hillman is the regional director of the Filipino American Veterans Recognition Project. General Hillman, will you join me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, and also, Mr. Chair, thank you for having us here today. And I'll just uh, grab my notes quick. But I recognize the name in the Council, uh, Rick Van, Van. We served in the Army together when I was first lieutenant, and he was a major. So hopefully I could catch it today. Nice to see you, sir. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Oscar Bautista Hillman. I'm a retired Brigadier General. I commanded the 81st Brigade during Operation I Iraqi Freedom II. Also became, not by choice, the Regional Director of Region 8. <laughs> that encompasses Alaska, Idaho, Montana, and Idaho to represent our region. The, we became a national member of the Filipino Veterans Project and Educational Project. But bottom line is this started in uh, November of 2013 when General Taguba came here. The Puerto Ricans received their Congressional Gold Medal. Before that, it was ready mentioned by Councilman Gossett that the 10442, the Nisei American, the Navajo, the Mexican have received the Congressional Gold Medal. The Congressional Gold Medal is the highest medal given to an organization in civilian for making part of the U.S. history. So it's very important to us to be part of that. So for the last five years, we worked very hard, and everyone here uh, participated with that. Velma Villoria, uh, Larry Campanero, the Filipino community of Seattle, we became, we became one instead of 35 Filipino organizations. Not many know about the history of the Philippines from 1898 to 1946. We were the Commonwealth of the United States under General Douglas MacArthur. So during that period, the preparing for the war, which Philippines became a U.S. national strategic uh, center of gravity, we start preparing, and, the, and President Truman said, General MacArthur prepare the U.S. for war in the Philippines and initiate the universal draft. So there were 260 Filipinos that became part of the war effort. Fast forward, after you heard about, uh, already mentioned by Councilman Gossett, the fall of Bataan, the Bataan death march, the Corregidor, the hell ships, the Moorish hell ships, and not many know about the sea battles in Manila Bay and also the South China Sea. We felt, the organization felt, that the Congressional Gold Medal is worth giving to our living veterans and to our spouses, and how we started the effort. But it, that didn't come very quickly, you know, although we have social media. There were many trips to Washington, D.C., and I will tell you that state of Washington legislator House of Representatives and U.S. Senator vote 100 percent for the Senate bill, and it became a public law. State of Washington became the first one who raised funds 
to support, to get replicas for the living veterans. State of Washington is the first one to get all other regions, Alaska, Idaho, and Montana, collectively 100% support the bill. So we're, we are from Region 8, and we're very proud of that. And we also want to thank you because th this proclamation is very important to us. Cindy and I will be going to the 25th and uh, to Congress at the Emancipation Hall. It'll be live at C-SPAN, so you'll see Cindy there, you know, and uh, <clears throat> we're all excited. And part of the proclamation you give us today will be also on our display during the dinner night where 500 uh, replicas will be given to living veterans, surviving spouses, and next of kin. So we're all excited, and uh, there's nothing more joy than to, uh, after 75 years, to receive this proclamation. Mr. Chair, Council Gossett, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to quickly take a personal point of privilege and have a young, one young woman. She'll always be a young lady to me because she's younger than I. Uh, Annie Galarosa, come and join me. Annie, there she is. Um, min oh, she said we're almost the same age. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, but I know that many of my colleagues and perhaps some of those in the audience are not aware of the fact that you uh, became more famous than you were in the 1980s when you uh, trained and then culturally performed with the Gang of Four to sold out houses for about three weekends of shows as a fundraising uh, activity. She was Gladys Knight and the Four Amigos, we were the pips. So it was, it was quite a show, but uh, Annie, uh, the reason I had Annie come up here, her father is one of the actual veterans uh, that uh, was part of the Filipino troops in the Philippines uh, at that time, and he is still with us. He's 100 years old, right? And uh, his name is uh, Escolastico. Galarosa. That's kind of close. Mm -hmm. All right, so without further ado, here's Annie Galarosa. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Good afternoon, honorable council persons and fellow citizens, family, and friends. On behalf of my father, Escolastico, also known as Scotty, and the Galarosa family, we want to thank you for this proclamation honoring the Filipino and American World War II veterans. This means a great deal to the Filipino community that the hurtful layers of our historical invisibility are slowly being peeled away and our contributions to American culture and history finally being recognized. My father is a simple, hardworking, direct man of few words. After the war, he was fortunate to become one of the first Filipino employees hired by Northwest Orient Airlines. Many of you are probably too young to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and worked in Shemya, Alaska, Chicago, Illinois, and finally here in Seattle, Washington, when in 1955 he was finally able to bring his wife and five children, myself being the youngest, to settle in the central district of Seattle. I didn't know him for the first four years of my life until he returned for us. Two more children were born in Seattle, and he lives there still in his own home in the central area. He is 100 years and eight months old. He will be 101 when he receives his medal, uh, when we have our local celebration next spring. <laughs> Although he is able to get around in his walker or cane, but due to developing Alzheimer's, was unable to come personally to meet you. Since it is not unusual for veterans and other survivors of traumatic events to not speak of their experiences, it wasn't until I was an adult that he opened up with more details about how he became a prisoner of war and survived the infamous Bataan Death March. I will share his short story in his own words 
from an interview that I did when he was around 82 years old. <clears throat> and this is his voice. After the Japanese invaded the islands, I was with the Company A, 14th Engineer Division of the Philippine Scouts. Our commander assembled our company in Maraviles, Bataan. We are ordered to surrender. I don't remember how many days we traveled before I escaped into the cane fields and into the jungle, along with some other men. There were five of us who spoke Visayan and split up because they didn't speak Tagalog. Uh, my father spoke at least three of the uh, Philippine dialects as well as English. I went to the mountain and joined the guerrillas in Bataan. I watched many civilians join the death march of the prisoners of war. I no longer had my uniform and found an empty house where I found civilian clothes. I met a lady who looked like my mother, who invited me to stay with them because I was so dirty. They gave me a change of clothes and cut my hair so that I would not look suspicious. That lady was very kind to me and told me to stick around and follow what the Japanese were telling the civilians to do. The lady had a business bringing vegetables and fruit to the city of Manila to sell. She told me to go with the man who delivered the fruits and vegetables and to tell the Japanese at the checkpoint that I was his assistant. At the Totoban station north of Manila, I told the driver I can travel alone now that Manila was declared an open city by the Japanese. I went straight to the Bicol community neighborhood in Manila where my relatives and townmates were staying. They were surprised that I was still alive and not sick from malaria and dysentery, which many of them suffered from. As long as the people in Manila followed the rules, the Japanese did not bother you as it was considered an open city. From there, I went back to my former employer, a Spanish family where I was their houseboy, and they were also surprised that I was alive and told me to stay with them for a while. Even though they already had helpers, I was welcome to stay. So I hope that just gave you a short little insight into a, so one man's personal life. Um, he didn't want to go into too many details, and as you know, you can't blame many of the survivors of the gruesome um, things that they experienced and that they observed. So with that, I, I do want to thank you again for this proclamation that helped support um, their contributions. And before I go, I also have one last announcement. The Filipino Community of uh, Center of Seattle would like to invite everyone here to the 82nd anniversary of the, of the Filipino Community of Seattle on November 4th, 2017. And it begins at 5 p.m. at the center that's located at Martin Luther King Way and Orcas. Thank you very much. Uh, now, as I proceed to read the proclamation, I'd like for some of the honored uh, members who are here today to uh, join me at the podium, uh, if you would. First, Brigadier General uh, Mr. Hillman, uh, then uh, Larry uh, Campronero of the Bataan Corridor Survivors Association, uh, Mariela Fletcher of the National Federation of Filipino American Association, Alan Garcia, President from the Filipino Community Center, Annie Galarosa, again, uh, whom you first um, uh, heard from a moment ago, Dorothy Cordova, and our own former elected official here in Washington State, Velma Valoria, and uh, Cindy, is that it? The main people, okay. Y'all see, I still call on Cindy. She's the only staffer that I know of that's been with the same boss, Carolyn, for 34 straight years. I like to tell her husband, who's here with us today, Gary Owens back there, your wife been with me long enough she been with you. Because I'm the one that introduced y'all. <laughs> also, I want to let you all The long-suffering Cindy Domingo. <laughs> uh, Addie Domingo, Cindy's mother is here with us, right? Raise your hand, Addie. And 
And uh, Vanjie and her husband, Rich, uh, Cindy's older sister and brother-in-law, uh, are also here uh, with us. If there are others that are part of the family whom names I forgot, Richard. Little Richie? Okay. <laughs> Little Richard? Okay. Little Richie? I'm sorry, I forgot you. Uh, Cindy's oldest sister's son. Being How close did I get to getting that right? Delete okay, thank you for being here. Anybody else I forgot uh, attributed to the mind but not the heart? With that, I'm going to read the... Oh, wait a minute. I know. I know I didn't forget Greg. Oh, Okay, so it isn't to this point yet. Well, we have, I'm really we have sorry. Yeah. Where do you want him to stand? Right, yeah. Center. Right, right beside me. And his wife. And then, and then somehow I'm gonna have to get back in there. <laughs> and I don't want to get between he and his wife. Come on by me. All right. Um, we're at the proclamation. Whereas Filipinos have lived in the United States for over 425 years, because some of them came with the Spanish conquistadors to Cali uh, back in the 1500s, and have contributed to the cultural, economic, social, and political life of the United States and Martin Luther King Jr. County, and whereas King County is home to cultural and historical institutions that are very important to the Filipino community locally, nationally, and internationally, including the Alaskan Cannery Workers Union, Region 37, the Inland Boatmen's Union, the Filipino American National Historical Society, uh, the Filipino Community Center of Seattle, and uh, Carlos Bulasan Historical Museum. And whereas on this coming October 25th, a delegation uh, from King County of about 50 people and Washington State will travel to Washington, D.C. to participate in a national celebration honoring um, Filipino World War II veterans whose service and sacrifice have been finally recognized by the United States government with the passage last year of the Filipino Veterans of World War II Congressional Gold Medal Act of 2015, now enshrined as Public Law 114-265. And whereas the Congressional Gold Medal is one of the highest civilian awards bestowed by the United States and represents a public expression of the U.S. Congress's gratitude on behalf of, national, of the national, of the nation for the distinguished contributions and services of these 260,000 Filipino soldiers and guerrillas during World War II, primarily in the Philippine Islands. And whereas uh, there are 12 living veterans from this region who will be receiving the Congressional Gold Medal, uh, Florentino Sinisa, Pedro Caneos, uh, Pri uh, Priscilio uh, Credo, Sergio Ivale, Escolastico Galarosa, Gregorio Garcia, Rafael Lamarca, Bienvenido Mendoza, Cesar, Cesar Marjeras, uh, Julian Nicholas, Joe Taton Sr., and Rudolfo Balao, as well as family members of many of the deceased veterans who uh, reside in this region. And whereas the awarding of the Congressional Gold Medal takes place during Filipino American History Month, and whereas Filipino American History Month provides 
opportunity to promote the study of uh, Filipino American history and culture and recognizes the contributions made by Filipino Americans. Now, therefore, we, the Metropolitan King County Council, proclaims October 2017 as Filipino American History Month here in King County. And we pay special tribute to the Filipino World War II veteran recipients of the Congressional Gold Medal. We encourage all the two million people of King County to join us in celebrating Filipino American History Month and in honoring the veterans and their families for their great contributions and sacrifices of the people of, Philippine, of the Philippines and of these United States of America. Dated the 16th day of October, 2017. Thank you. Now, colleagues, I'm finally at the point where I'd like to make a special request that you all join us for a picture, if you would. We got let's go up here. Oh, it is. One more. Thank you. Is that enough? Thank you. All right. Thank you.